Hey, it's Boyd from Air Boyd, and I'm back from my vacation that was poorly placed right in the middle of the Microsoft Flight Simulator release on the 18th of August. So for those of you who've been following along the saga as we go through this here, I had gone out and just purchased a uh, higher-end middle-spec computer to play Flight Simulator using Microsoft specs. So I've, I've got a uh, an RTX 2070, uh, 16 gigs of RAM and a Ryzen, and this is the NZXT build. Those of you who can follow along with me and knowing that I tried to get 4K out of it at the beginning, but I couldn't. Here's the supposition benchmark. It actually does pretty well on its own playing uh, pretty much any other game or benchmark. Where it runs into problems, of course, is the Microsoft Flight Simulator. So what I've done is I've actually gone the hard route, and I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to 2080 Ti and uh, see how that works. Now, that's not the most cost-effective way of dealing with the issue, and it's something I, I struggled with for a couple of weeks while I was on vacation, and I decided that for me it was worth it. I wanted to keep doing the flight simulator, so I'm, I'm going to go with a higher-end machine and uh, see if I can get it perform. Downside to this, of course, is uh, due to COVID, everything is severely back-ordered. It's probably going to be another three weeks until I get my NZXT build sent to me. So, uh, again, NZXT isn't uh, providing these. It's uh, just a gaming rig that I chose based on recommendations. So, here we are here, taking off uh, London City Airport. It is early in the morning, 1920 by 1080 on the high-end setting. And you can see we get pretty close to 60 frames a second consistently. Uh, it's, you know, somewhere between 42 and 52, peaking at 60, and then uh, dropping down every now and then to 30. A lot of complaints about me flying low down the river here. Uh, you know, it's one of the things we don't really get to do as true pilots is uh, fly low or do any things you can't normally do. So I always like to do it. Plus, this is one way I knew I could get in and actually push the rendering. There's just so much 3D articulation going by, everything from the water surfaces, the reflections, and everything else. So it's really a good test of the machine and pushing it to its limits. So, fairly respectable, certainly holds 30, not quite a full 60, it's not too bad, and high end is certainly good enough that you can see what's going on outside in London and heading on up the Thames here past the O2 Arena. Skipping ahead up the river, coming up to Tower Bridge, going to go ahead and try and get under it this time instead of through it, and I'm pretty sure I just clipped the tail on this one. I, I've made it through successfully once uh, since the preview version, this is the full release version, and, you know, I've got it set off so that uh, basically I just bounce off the ground and keep going. A lot of that, of course, is because I've been letting my son play and it's just really much easier for him to deal with it that way. So there you go, 1920 by 1080, and we'll move on to looking at the next settings. Now, I will mention here as I bump it up to uh, 1920 by 1440 on the high end, just one short of ultra that I did get a lot of help from the uh, forums uh, on a, a number of places where people helped me work on the ma machine itself. We started looking at overclocking and you know pretty much the 2070 will do uh, 1080, 1440 pretty much where you want it high, high end and pretty much get everything that you want without too many problems. As you see here I backed it back into 2160 and right at the bottom of 30 frames per second Every now and then you get a little drop off, but it's not too bad. It's not really noticeable at home. It's a little bit more noticeable in the screen capture process here, uh, but it works pretty well for flying around. Low level, it's not peaking too much, and you can see the resolution, the, the reflections, things of that nature. All look pretty good, really, for uh, what it's doing here, and it's certainly something that's playable. So can a 2070 Super handle this? Absolutely it can. It just depends on what you're willing to sacrifice. So here we go, 1080 Ultra. Interestingly, I'm actually getting slightly better rendering than I was getting at the lower setting. Uh, one of the things I think a lot of people have decided along with myself is there's probably too many trees, uh, too detailed trees. So what I did later on was as I tweaked this for 1440, started with ultra i took the trees down i took the bushes down and i took those all the way down to low uh, it does take out a lot of detail on those but it seems to help the machine an awful lot uh, i believe it's something on the order of a couple trillion trees that are rendered in this 
A lot of people notice they're the wrong heights, they're going to the wrong places. Uh, airports like Paris, originally in the preview versions, they were growing all over the place where they didn't exist in real life. So, you know, you could knock out some things that really suck on the power. Uh, you can see here, here's the rain, and you can just barely hear it in the background there if I shut up. You might be able to hear it there. And of course, there's still some other things like everybody has probably had the infamous Airbus autopilot issue where it just basically goes into super Dutch roll. And again, in the full release version, still some issues with the uh, flight deck controls on some of the planes. For instance, the 747 autopilot, FMS, EFAS, and a number of the other functions, mode control panels still not working completely. Uh, I do have the AI on on this takeoff helping me. It's supposed to be a takeoff heading down towards the hurricane that was off the Florida coast at the time. Now, the Airbus works a little bit better than the 747, and I haven't jumped into the 787 yet. I do have that available. Uh, I did have a quick peruse through it the other day. Uh, one of the things I did notice straight away is a uh, flight director switch turns both sides on. A few other things, the LNAV, VNAV, flight level change, still not working exactly as they do. Uh, you can see me here trying to get the LNAV, VNAV re-engaged. The autopilot is on. Uh, the AI is supposed to be initiating a climb here. Uh, there I am putting the gear up for it. And it just didn't get quite through the whole thing. But, it, you know, it does take some time to get the flight plan set up on this properly. It's not entirely clear how much work the AI will do for you when you set up this aid work as your co-pilot. And it's just the way it is at the moment. And I had another issue where this is actually the release game. And I didn't realize uh, right as I went to take off. And again, I was looking at the weather because I was trying to figure out how far up the Florida coast I needed to go to see the hurricane moving up the east side. Uh, Miami was probably a little too close, which is why we used Fort Myers later on. Uh, what I didn't realize is the aircraft uh, should have been on the runway, ready to go, and when I come back inside, everything was turned off, or at least the displays weren't on, but everything was working properly. The autopilot would engage, the LNAV would engage, uh, but basically everything else was completely gone. Throttles were working fine. Uh, it's just one of those things that happens. You could see the AI put the gear up there like it was supposed to. Uh, did the checklist. Nothing would turn it back on, did everything else. So just a few little glitches still happen here and there. And now that there's third-party support, I, I figure a lot of this will disappear. We will see the Honeywell FMS, the Sperry FMS, things of that nature, probably getting better since there's so many products already out there. Uh, there's there's third-party aftermarket open-source products to replicate the FMC and FMS functions really, really well. One of the other lessons I learned here is that you can't screen record with HDR very well. Uh, There's just something about the NVIDIA card that doesn't like it. So this is coming out of uh, Palos Verdes. Took a left turn off of Torrance Airport and basically just flying over Palos Verdes Estates and heading around the peninsula here. This again is the 2070 RTX Super and this is 1440 running at Ultra. And you can see I'm pushing just about 30 frames a second consistently uh 33 35 and the sky is washed out from the hdr but you can see the detail and what's going on to the left of the, the cliff faces the different textures are all rendering pretty well at this speed and height and again i'm flying low just so you know it's really pushing the data limit the load limit the 3d limit everything we can into this to really drive this down so 2070 super definitely in there for uh, 1080 uh, 1440 anything higher than that you're really going to start to get the tearing anything of that nature one of the weird things I, I do still find at least on my rig is inside the cockpit seems to be a heavier draw on frames per second than outside and as a lot of people keep asking why do we care about frames per second we're just trying to get this looking as good as we can with what we've got and I think everybody's going to agree, and I think I, I read in one of the magazines the other day, that this is pretty much going to be the next generation of what is the graphics card that you need to run this in the highest possible way. It's certainly pushing everything possible out there. And, you know, th this is it. So, you know, next step, hopefully VR in the fall, maybe next year. They've hinted at it for sure. And that may or may not uh, lower the re requirements here as it will be for 4K, but we'll have to see when it comes out. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll try and get back to more of this as soon as I get my rig back.